All right, good morning, everyone. This is Wake Tech Advising. My name is Blair Turpin. I'm an academic advisor here at Wake Tech. Um, this morning, from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, we are welcoming North Carolina State University. Uh, we will begin in just a moment. We have <coughs> um, Taylor Holland here from admissions at NC State, and he is going to talk a little about the school and then be ready to answer some questions for you. Um, I also have another advisor helping me out. Natalia, if, if you have any questions, just please post them to the Q&A box. We will be periodically checking, um, but at the end of the presentation, Taylor will answer those questions. All right, and here's Taylor. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for attending our information session. We're very honored and humbled that you came to join us. And this is a, a relatively um, quick but very thorough PowerPoint presentation to go over the main basics of transfer admissions and a little bit about the university as well, which a lot of you can find on our main websites. And let me repeat those for you right now. Um, the main website for the entire university is ncsu.edu. That's the main university website to get anywhere and everywhere about anything and everything you need to know about the university. And so again, that is ncsu.edu. And then the admissions website is very easy as well. That is admissions.ncsu.edu. So there's two main websites for you right there. And in case you are interested in getting on our mailing list or our information list to find out about things going on and have some information sent to your email account, when you go to admissions ncsu.edu just pull the page down a little bit and you'll look on the right side and it has a question there going interested in nc state that's where you can sign up to get on our mailing list and information list and find out about all different types of programs virtual once again eventually in person um, programs as well including open houses uh different department open houses and virtual visits and stuff like now and I'm going to talk in the current time that we're in so everything is you know a lot of things are pretty much virtual so we've got a lot of virtual options throughout the entire university for you to choose from right there from the comfort of your home your phone wherever you are and so definitely you can find out about things like that and again that's going to be on the admissions.ncsu.edu again pull the page down just a little bit and on the right side you should see a picture of mr wolf and it'll say interested in NC State with a big question mark. That's how you get on our interest form, interest list, mailing list, and find out a lot of information that will be sent to you on a regular basis. And if you feel like that you're getting too much, you can always opt out. It's up to you. But there's a lot of great stuff that we send out to students and a lot of great information, including um, during application time season. Um, we send out some information about you know deadlines coming up to help remind you to it's time to apply. The deadlines are coming up. 
it's really helpful to get on that information list. So please do um, get on that interest form if you are not already receiving emails from NC State University. So this picture right here, our welcome slide, that's actually a picture of the Centennial Campus. That is our um, Hunt Library. It's considered the most technologically advanced library in the nation, and uh, it's a fantastic place. And a lot of students like to hang out there and study because we have quiet study rooms and loud study rooms and 3D classrooms, IMAX classroom, one level IMAX classrooms, outdoor study areas, uh, individual study rooms, group study rooms. I mean, it's just a computerized building. It's amazing what goes on in there. It really is. And it's so popular back when we were doing tours. We're not doing any currently right now just to keep everybody safe. Uh, we get a lot of public uh, we get a lot of people from the public who love to come and tour that facility because it's just unlike anything you've ever seen. And again, that's one of our main libraries. The DH Hill Library on the main campus has been thoroughly updated as well also. So let's head on to the next slide, Blair. So everybody knows, you know, this is, you know, we are talking with Wake Tech students and a lot of you are from this area and a lot of you may have just started at Wake Tech this year and moved to Raleigh and started at Wake Tech this year. Raleigh is a great area to be in. We're right off the edge of downtown Raleigh. That's obviously where this is. And uh, it is a top five area for business and careers. And it's a great, it's one of the top cities to go to college in. There's a lot of top rankings. I could just spend the whole, you know, half hours talking about this one slide practically, but just to kind of keep it brief, uh, basically, you know, a lot of our students love the fact that we are right near downtown. We're not in downtown, but we're about five, six, seven minutes away, whether you are biking or Ubering or using your own car. We're about five, six, seven minutes away from downtown proper. And there's a lot of restaurants down there who are still doing outdoor dining and uh, a lot of museums and theater and just a lot of people live downtown, uh, faculty, staff and students because there's a number amount of apartments and condominiums and there's homes all around downtown Raleigh as well. So it's a really neat place and there's just a lot of activity. A lot of our students love to run and exercise in downtown, um, whether that be on a skateboard, a bicycle or walking or jogging or whatever. It's, it's a really, really neat big small city or a large small city, whatever, whichever way you want to look at it. But it is a really great area for our students because we do offer a number of internships and co-op opportunities through a lot of the corporations that are located in this vicinity and all over Wake County in, um, in our general vicinity, the entire county that this area is located in as well. So there's all kinds of opportunities available to our students as well. And it does not matter what major you're in because every single one of our majors have the opportunity for internships and co-op opportunities. A lot of them can turn into job offers where all you have to do is just come back and finish up your degree after you've done an internship, whether that be during a summer or a fall or spring semester. And then every one of our majors you know, from our humanities all the way up through our STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics majors. STEM, you hear a lot about. We're one of the top STEM universities. Uh, doesn't matter what major you're in, you can add a research component to your major to really increase, you know, and make that college resume look really nice as well. So we'll go on to the next slide, Blair. There might be a time delay. There we go. So again, it, well, I talked about rankings and we're going to talk a little bit more. Um, again, it's the number two uh, in the nation most educated city in the US. That was by Forbes and that ranking is still quite up there just a few short years later. It is one of the best US cities for college students because there's a lot. There are quite a few colleges around the area and we are one of them. We are the largest in the state of North Carolina uh, for all the public universities. And so um, a very strong ranking right there by the American Institute for Economic Research. And then again, one among the six best big cities, best in the city for the Southeast Raleigh. And that's really for younger, you know, for um, young children, students of all ages, all the way up to college students and graduate students and students going for their doctorate degrees. And um, also, you know, just for living in Raleigh and job opportunities in Wake County and in Raleigh as well. Also, it is considered one of the best. And if you go to a number of different types of ranking areas, you'll see Raleigh is always up there in the rankings as a great city to live, to grow old in. And it's a great city for, you know, young couples, singles, middle age, senior citizens and what have you. So it's just a really fantastic place to be. It really is. I've lived here for a very long time now. I'm originally from uh, the middle of 
area of North Carolina and moved to the big city of Raleigh or the big small city, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but it's it's been a it's been a great ride for me as well, also here. So I really do like Raleigh. I enjoy it a lot. And a lot of our students, believe it or not, you know, a lot of them move all over the world. A lot of them move to other areas of the country, and a lot of them stay in the Raleigh area after they've graduated from NC State University. So it's your choice, but there's a lot to offer here for everybody, no matter what your own personal uh, scenario of life might be. And so it's just something for you to definitely check out. So if you are new to Wake Tech, you've moved from another state, you've moved from another area of North Carolina, welcome to Raleigh and um, hope you get a chance to really check it out soon. Even during these interesting times for us, unprecedented times around the globe, there's still a lot to be able to safely check out and you know get around and take a look at your new area. And for those of you who are familiar with Raleigh, but there's still a lot of hidden gems, as they say, that you may not know about and stuff. You know, the neatest little shop or the neatest little restaurant or the neatest little coffee shop or bistro or a great little hangout pub or something like that or great clubs or organizations. You know, there's hundreds if not thousands of organizations to help others and to help yourself and to help you know your families and you know just to help give your time uh, to people in need and to you know become a part of an organization that has a, a, you have an interest in your soul there's probably a club or organization outside of your university even though we offer a lot and i'll go into that more in just a few minutes but raleigh itself offers a lot to a lot of people of every age and every background no matter where you're from you can find a lot of stuff to do here we're going to move on, Blair. All right, so NC State, we began back in the 1880s with a few gentlemen from a few counties in North Carolina studying mechanical and agricultural arts, and that turned into the nine colleges of NC State University, which consist of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, the College of Design, the College of Education, the College of Engineering, the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, the Poole College of Management or Business School, the College of Natural Resources, the College of Sciences, and the College of Textiles. So our departments basically are called College of, and then the colleges themselves have their own individual departments within the majors that they all each offer. All of them offer a wide variety of majors underneath of those, underneath each of those headings. And we're broken up into these three distinct areas of the campus, but we also own a lot of land from the mountains to the coast of North Carolina for research projects. But the main campus, Centennial Campus and the Centennial Biomedical Campus is where you're going to spend a lot of your time. The main campus is really, again, where it all began with just a few acres. It is now 687 acres of academics, uh, um, workout facilities, um, athletic fields, classrooms, um, administrative offices, residence halls, everything that you can imagine, cafeterias, restaurants, bistros, um, coffee shops. There's just a lot going on. That picture right there are students um, having a little group meeting right there in front of our Tally Student Center, which is relatively still brand new for us. Um, our student union was completely revamped about six years ago, six, seven years ago, and it looks completely different than anybody who might have seen the original one. And it incorporates our bookstore, meeting rooms, some academic offices as well, and great study areas, indoors and outdoors, as well as restaurants and just a host of different things. It's really a great place for students to meet up who are coming from different parts of the campus. And it's real easy to walk around. The longest walk on this campus would be, um, I would say approximately 18 minutes. You can walk wherever you want in approximately 18 minutes. Uh, no matter what corner, from the farthest corner of the campus to the other corner of the campus, it's actually a diagonal would be the longest walk, but it's really does move, you know, get, get around quite quickly, but we do offer, uh, you know, bicycles, electric bicycles, we have scooters, electric scooters, and, uh, but a lot of people choose to just walk it because it's just so easy to maneuver. Yes, it sounds like it's a huge place. It is the largest university, but it is very maneuverable to get around campus as well. And we even offer, for those of you who do not have cars, we have the rental zip cars that you can rent for an hour or up to a half a day, full day if you need to, to go anywhere you want. And the insurance and the gas is on us, is on Zipcar. So you have your own little uh, way of renting cars real easily. If you need to go somewhere in Raleigh, Wake County or what have you, or go pop over to another little town nearby and see a buddy, it's just, it's really easy to get around the area. And so a majority, 
of activity, a lot of our activity. There's a lot of activity on all three campuses, but it all began with the main campus. And then the Centennial campus started getting built and the Centennial Biomedical campus started getting built. The Centennial campus is home to the College of Engineering and the College of Textiles and that Hunt Library you see up there in the upper uh, middle part of the picture as well. And so College of Engineering, they started moving here many years ago. College of Textiles moved in to here many years ago as well. And so there's, a, and we even offer student housing over here in the form of apartments and suites as well. And then we also have some recreation. Our Alumni Center is located over here. Our Chancellor's resident, the president of the university, the Chancellor, his uh, residence is located over here as well. And then we have a golf course over here. And then we also have a hotel and conference center over here, our second conference center to go along with the McKimmon Center, which is situated in between the Centennial Campus and the Centennial Biomedical Campuses. So we have two conference centers, centers here and a really nice, uh, just awesome hotel as well. So, and then you see that lake up there, that's called Lake Raleigh. Some students call it Lake Raleigh Wood. And uh, there's hiking and biking and jogging and walking all around that lake. And also you can kind of, you can rent kayaks and canoes from our recreational center and kayak the lake. It's a really nice place. And during the winter, we actually hold a, uh, we do a lot of fundraisers for the area and for uh, just, you know, for the country as well also. But one of them for a children's charity is done here. It's coming up soon here later on in February uh, called the Polar Plunge. It's everything you think I'm talking about. Everything. You run in, you run out, you run in, you run out on a cold, icy Saturday morning. And the more times you run in and run out, the more money you raise for a great children's charity. And we do so many of them, including the Krispy Kreme Challenge. Uh, I think they're going to do a modified virtual version of that this year. Uh, if you love Krispy Kreme donuts, get ready because it's a matter of running uh, a mile, basically, to a Krispy Kreme. Wolf down a couple, no pun intended, wolf down a... Uh, dozen hot glazed donuts and then you have to run a mile back to the campus in under an hour it makes for an interesting day let me tell you so anyway that's um just a little bit of extra work you know extra information when it comes to centennial campus and us overall the centennial biomedical campus is home to our number four ranked in the nation on um, veterinarian college it's a fantastic facility for those of you who love animals and it goes really well for students who are thinking about undergraduate majors and thinking about becoming a veterinarian in our uh, pre-med area studies, such as first and foremost, zoology or animal science, but you can also do it through biology and biochemistry and microbiology and even some other uh, STEM science areas as well. There are no undergraduate classes taught here per se. It's really for the graduate levels and doctorate levels, but you can volunteer your time here or if you're interested in becoming a vet and you're going through zoology or animal science or one of the other STEM majors and you're taking the pre-vet prerequisites attached to your major, we also do that for law school as well. Um, you can um, volunteer your time here, get your name uh, out there within the uh, veterinarian college and we also even have a full working farm right there on the back side of it that's all our land right there um, that we own so we have animals running all over the place and then we even have a 20 we have a 24-hour emergency veterinarian clinic there open 365 days a year we have families coming from other states to get help for their particular animal large animal small animal does not matter we even do a 24-hour turtle rescue service here that's run by our students and a few faculty members as well also i've rescued a few turtles from the road and brought them here and brought them back to health and uh just really still just giving back to community as well also located on the centennial on um, biomedical campus is our pnc basketball arena for men's basketball and our carter finley football stadium for the football team as well also so all of these are within uh, a bicycling distance of each other some students have walked it you know it's maybe a little bit of a longer walk about 30 minutes it would probably take you to walk from main campus to centennial biomedical that would be about 30 35 minute walk but we do have the wolf line shuttle buses that work from the morning to late night, and those are free to you. They're air conditioned, they're heated, they're even got Wi-Fi on there, so you can even just ride the bus all day if you want and work on your computer as well. So it's really easy to get around the campus no matter what your mode of transportation is. But this is the main gist of NC State University right here, but not to mention the research land that we offer all around the state of North Carolina, from the mountains all the way down to the coast, for those of you who have ever heard of Holden Beach uh, down in Brunswick County, we 
have a lot of research land right there on the coast as well, where a lot of our students going into our marine sciences through the College of Sciences, they'll go down there and spend some time down there, whether it be for a day, a week, uh, a summer summer session. Uh, we can set up living facilities and stuff. Opportunity, I think, is the main thing I'm trying to get through in this conversation that we have opportunity for every student no matter what your major what your life plan is and that's how it works for us we want everything for you blair next slide please a lot of people like to know you know what are your most popular majors well here's the thing we offer over 110 majors available to students and all of them are very popular. All of them get a lot of applications. So it is a competitive application process, which I'll go through here in just a few moments. But it's a it's a common question to ask a college representative or any you know university, you know, what were your 10 most popular this past year? And this would be it right here, which represents a number of our different colleges, but it runs from business administration through psychology, animal science, communication. You can all read this, of course, biological sciences. And that's probably because a lot of people go into pre-med through our biology department as well, but you have other choices. You're not locked into biology. Computer science is an engineering degree and we have concentrations in gaming and we're also um, doing another one for, um, we're getting ready to fire up another specialized uh, concentration in computer science, cyber security will be now be a new uh, concentration that you can have with your computer science degree as well. Mechanical is very popular, political science. A lot of people use that to go to law school, doing the pre-law tracks that we can attach to political science or English or history or a number of other majors as well. You're not locked into just one area. Accounting in our um, College of Management and English is a big one for students who are thinking about becoming an author or writing, going to work for uh, mass media, television, radio, magazines, uh, you know, specialized TV, you know, um, I've known some people, I know one person who has moved on to Motor Trend Television, for those of you who are into cars. And so, you know, having a really great English degree, fantastic, can go in a number of different ways. But these were the 10 most popular, but that does not mean the other 90 plus were not popular. All of our majors do get a lot of applications, but there you go. All right, so we're going to move on to the next one, Blair. Wow, time flies. Anyway, all right. So application deadlines. We don't have where you can actually apply for the summer. We do have off, we do offer summer sessions, but you actually apply for official entry into the university through our spring and fall deadlines. And so there's a little twist to the spring. There's a little bit of a twist to the fall, and I'm going to cover that here right now. So our application deadline every year around August 1st, our three applications, and those will be coming up next in the next slide or two, but our applications open up on August 1st for the spring and the next fall as well. So what happens is on August 1st, you go into our website, you hit the apply button, you're gonna set up an account, and you'll wanna use a personal email account, uh, not a school email account, because sometimes um, firewalls to protect your school accounts might block messages to us, because when you apply and you put an email address on your application and you send it in, we're gonna set up what is called a Wolfpaw account for you, and that's where you check the status of your application at least once or twice a week, all the way up to the notification dates. If you're applying for the spring term or applying for the College of Design, which is fall entry only. Now that's where it gets a little tricky. If you're applying for the spring term or the fall entry College of Design, you want to start your application. You want to get everything to us by uh, October 1st, October 15th, November 1st, which have you. But October 1st is the main deadline for all of the majors. You do have through uh, technically November 1st to apply for the College of Design, even though it's not a spring entry, it's a fall entry because you also have to upload your artistic portfolio. So what we tell people applying for the College of Design's studio based majors, you want to apply by October 1st, October 15th, so we can set up your Wolfpaw account, get a message to your email account, and information inside your Wolfpaw account that we will build for you. Don't try and build one for yourself. We'll build one for you. And it'll tell you how to upload that, uh, that artistic portfolio to be considered. And so everybody who applies by October 1st, that means getting your documents to us as well, your college transcripts. And if you're in your first year of college somewhere or with Wake Tech and you're trying to transfer in for your sophomore year, we will need your high school transcript, official final high school transcript sent along with your um, standardized test scores as well, also sent by the college board or the testing agency. However, once you've got all that into us by October 1st, everybody finds out their answer through their Wolfpaw account 
on December 1st. The College of Design is going to wait until around the March time frame to release their decisions. They have their own unique decision time. There's not a set date. It's always during the month of March, somewhere in the middle of March to find out whether or not you've been admitted into one of the studio based majors for the College of Design. Some of our majors do not allow students to apply for the spring entry because fall entry is just works so much better. And that would be, of course, College of Design, our fashion and textile design, physics, mathematics, applied math and statistics do not accept students for spring entry for fall entry that's all the way up to february 15th okay and so our deadline coming up for fall 21 is coming up right now it really is best to apply around december after you've finished your fall term you've got those grades locked in on your transcript and then apply during the december holiday break but definitely during february before february 15th and get your transcripts to us including your fall grades if you're in you know some grades right now or you were in some you know taking some classes during the fall and then everybody finds out on the notification date of april 15th that's how the application deadline works now some people might have a question well can i start in the summer if you get an official offer for fall entry, you can then contact the university, the admissions office, and our Summer Start program, Summer Start Second Transfer, Summer Start Second Session, to talk about backing up your admissions to the second session of summer school. And you can take up to one or two take one up to two courses and be a part of a little program to get used to the university and get started that way. Uh, and go ahead and get started at NC State, but you have to wait till you're admitted to the fall before you can ask for the transfer summer start second session program. Blair, we'll go on to the next one. So what makes a complete application? So we have the Common App, we have the Coalition App, and we also have the brand new, so new, didn't get it on this slide, but so new, the brand new NC State Transfer app. When you go to our admissions.ncsu.edu and you click on the apply button, which is also a great way when you hover over that apply area and not click on it, drop down menus come down. And if you wanna to get to the transfer page, just hover over the transfer page, click on it, and it brings up the whole entire transfer website. So that's how you find it. But as far as applying, you go to our website and click on, actually click on the apply button, and you'll have three choices, not just these two. The Common App, you can apply to many different colleges, and it'll have, once you put down NC State, some other windows will open up for NC State University as well. You can even upload your unofficial transcripts through the Common App, but it is best to have your school send in the official transcripts as well. Coalition is for for coalition equity and access as well and it's got a great college planning tool on there for you to list all your achievements past present and your future achievements that you're thinking about as well and then the regular nc state application also has uh a lot of great ways for you know it's a great way to apply as well so we give you choices there's no preference it's up to you whichever way you want to do it and you know you, totally your choice either way we do recommend that you know students ask what can i do to make my application stand out fill out all of the application simple as that there are personal statements on there there's short answers short essays um the personal a lot of them are not required but if you want your application to stand out because a lot of people are applying we cannot accept everybody. It is competitive. So if you want your application to help, you know, one piece of that application to stand out other than your academics as well, you know, fill out all of the application, even though even sections that may not be required, put some stuff in there for us, you know, for us to see what kind of student you are and how you would do, because we want to make sure that when we bring you in, you're going to be successful at the university as well. Each of our applications require an $85 application fee. Uh, again, your choice. And then official high school or college transcripts, they're only needed if you are in your first year of college, okay? And you haven't quite locked in all 30 transferable credit hours um, post high school. So if you had dual enrollment, during high school that's great we're going to count it but you have to have 30 transferable credit hours post high school graduation in order to avoid having to send in your high school transcript and we're only going to eyeball it we're not using it as a main decision factor in a sense we're just using it as a guidance to see what kind of student you were and basically same thing with the sat act scores as well um, if you have them during COVID semesters, we're not requiring um, students, you know, COVID semesters that students were coming from high school and they were going into college, what have you. This year, fall uh, fall 20, 
spring uh, spring 2021. We did not require SAT, ACT. It was test optional. So if you're going to like next year apply in your first year, we're not necessarily going to ask for those ACT, SAT scores, but we will ask for the high school transcript. If you have AP or IB test scores, please send them in because we can use them to meet certain specific requirements, whether it be a math, a science, or an English. And uh, all of our majors do require certain courses in that range of uh, subjects for you to have based on the major that you're applying to. AP scores can help with that. Threes, fours, and fives on those AP scores, but that they cannot count towards the 30 hours for admissions purposes, but we can use them as a guidance tool to say that you've got that particular course locked in based on having those official scores sent to us. Blair, next one. What we look for basically is your academic achievement so that you've done good work in your college or colleges. If you're coming from a multi multitude of colleges, uh, we do need transcripts from each and every college attended. We do combine the overall GPAs based on transferable types of courses attempted. So we don't count technical courses or, you know, the very lucrative career of AC, HVAC repair. Those are technical in nature. Great career. Good night, but um, great career. But we can't count those as part of your GPA. It's based on transferable types of gen ed courses from regionally accredited universities and community colleges. Wake Tech is one of the top accredited uh, community colleges. The whole entire community college system is as well. In fact, for those of you who did not know, the entire North Carolina community college system is always ranked in the top five in the nation so you're with a great system you really are and we are a very strong partner of the community college system and wake tech's our biggest buddies they are our biggest buddies and so we work a lot with wake tech but we work a lot with everybody as well also but the academic achievement is really going to be a big piece of the pie because you're already a college student you might be able to join some clubs and organizations you may not have time because you have to get in your car and you have to go to work some of you might be lucky to join some clubs and organizations and that's great too but we're not going to compare those two types of students so we put more of a emphasis on the holistic uh, academic balance of your work and did you have the required courses that are highly recommended on our website the competitive transferable gpa again we combine them all we will drop two grades below a c minus if you have two unfortunate grades there we'll just throw them away and just not count them in the gpa calculation if you repeated them great we'll count the new grade only if you had a third repeat a fourth repeat a fifth repeat those new grades are calculated with the original grade but however if you have two unfortunate grades below a c minus we toss them out if you did a repeat, great, we'll count the new one. If you did not repeat it, no loss, no loss at all. Grades on those recommended courses, we do look at those math grades heavily. We do look at the um, English grades and the science grades heavily. It depends on the major, but it doesn't mean that you can go light and easy on the other courses that you're taking. But, you know, those recommended courses that you find on our website for transfer admissions, because each area when you go into the transfer section, look for what we look for or recommendations for transfer applicants. It lists it by colleges and it shows you the maths we're looking for, the Englishes we're looking for, and in the case of STEM, the sciences we're looking for, and the overall minimum GPA for consideration. They're not guaranteed GPAs that if you've got this, you're in. You want to be above these recommendations to make yourself competitive with the other students who are applying with you for that major for that term that you're applying for. Again, extracurricular activities, they're great. Having a job, that's great too, but we don't really use it heavily in the admissions decision because everybody's different. Every student is different. Every student has something, a different responsibility. Nobody is the same. So where extracurricular activities or job experience or research projects or anything that you've already done, those are going to come in handy, especially after you get admitted to NC State University and your advisors and the clubs and organizations um, crew, which there's over 700 clubs and organizations, academic based, social based and academically social based. We have over 700 organizations for you to choose from. Having some of those extracurriculars or what your job experience was or any experiences outside of the classroom are going to come in handy once you get to NC State University for us to help recommend some really great things for you to do outside of the classroom. Blair, next one. So a lot of people like to know about scholarships, so here we go. The pack assist, what happens is once you get admitted, um, your Wolfpaw account is slowly going to migrate into a Wolf 
a PAC portal and a PAC assist account. The PAC assist account is for you to apply for scholarships. There's not a ton of scholarships in the very beginning for transfer students, but there is some that good night scholarship. In fact, for those of you with a uh, smartphone or even a flip phone, I used to have one up till recently. Yes, I did. Anyway, but take a picture of this. This is a really great um, screen for you to take a picture of and keep it ready because there's one more screen coming up. I want you to take another picture of as well. But the pack assist helps you apply for scholarships not only in the beginning after you get admitted, but it also helps you apply for scholarships after you get to NC State University and establish an NC State GPA. That's where more scholarships are going to come up available to transfer students after you've been here for a semester up to a year and however long you are here afterwards, whether you're staying for your master's doctorate, what have you. But for undergraduate, PAC Assist, always keep that in the back of your mind, um, especially around finals every each and every semester. So take a picture of this for those of you. This is a very important screen. I want you to have this. The Good Night Scholarship is a scholarship designed for transfer students from North Carolina Community Colleges only. If you are graduating with the Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, Associate of Engineering, and the new coming up, coming down the road, the two new teacher education um, transfer degrees, the batch, the Associate of Arts and Associate of Science teacher education degrees, those are transfer degrees as well. And so you got five transfer degrees to choose from at various community colleges. Not all the community colleges are going to get them at the same time, but a lot of them have the three, the Associate of Arts, Science and Engineering. Those are all mostly in place at all 58 community colleges. Wake Tech has got all three of them already, and they're getting those teacher education degrees very soon, if not already. Um, also, if you're graduating with that and you're going into a STEM, a science based major, technology based major, engineering based major, management, education, science, math, education based major, apply for the Goodnight Scholarship. It's a it is. Um, started by Dr. Jim and Ann Goodnight of the SAS Corporation. He is a double alum of NC State University, and he started the SAS Corporation, one of the top companies in the world to work for. And uh, he started this because it was originally for first year freshmen. Now it's a, a big deal for transfer students as well. They give out a good handful of those each and every year, and it is a scholarship that is renewable for up to $20,500 per year. And even though you're coming to NC State as a junior after graduating from Wake Tech, um, we give you th up to three years to finish that um, program that you're coming in for, and it is renewable for up to $20,500 per year for each of the three years if you stay for three years. So definitely check out the Goodnight Scholarship. Everybody should have a free application for federal student aid um, on file. That's the financial aid. And so basically it's studentaid.org. This old website will still work for sure, but there's a new easier website called studentaid, all one word, dot org. And that will be nationwide for everybody as well also. So you've got a lot of different opportunities to help pay for college. And this again, hopefully everybody took a picture of this for you to take a look at. And Blair, I think we got one more slide and we'll take some questions. <clears throat> everybody who's listening in on this, please take a picture of this. This is some great websites for all of our different colleges of the university and also some contact names are on some of these as well. Also for you to get more detailed information, we can tell you a lot in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. However, <clears throat> if you want more detailed, uh, deep information basically, get in touch with these um, various different colleges and there's some others um, other um, contacts on here as well also and then of course we've got our Instagrams and everything going on with connecting with us along with that mail that what that area of the website I told you to get on our mailing list but here's a great way for you to get some more detailed information about the particular program where you can ask them about you know what are your students doing for internships co-ops research opportunities where are they going what companies are coming you know looking at the students to hire once I graduate, you know, I'm one of your strongest graduates. What companies are coming to look at us? What companies, you know, are, you know, because we have career fairs um, all the time. So definitely a good way to get more insider detail about the particular programs that you're interested in. So please take a picture of this. This is a great tool to use for those of you. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, great website for you to take a look at and you know, great websites, excuse me, but definitely it's going to give you a lot more information. We have a lot in the admissions office, don't get me wrong, but these websites, these websites and the, some of the contact names that you see on here, these are the pros. 
for your major and for your future and where you can go and recommending internships and co-op opportunities, research opportunities, and they've got all the details of graduate numbers and where the students are going, how many go to off to grad school, how many go off to med school, how many go off to law school, how many go off and start their own um, company, even while they're still at NC State University or right after they finish with NC State University. We're one of the top entrepreneurship universities in the nation. We have over 125 startup companies in the last few years that were started by students and they're their own CEO, their own president of their own company as well. Also, everybody on these websites can talk to you more about that. What's happened inside their own particular college as well. So that is the main thing about admissions for NC State University. We're going to get ready. I think they're going to make this change the screens over a little bit and we're going to take some questions from you all. So Blair, I'll turn it over to you. Or whoever's going to speak. <laughs> Hey Blair, I can see you. <laughs> You're hey. hey, all right, everyone. We are going to um, read through some of the questions. Um, you guys are unable to speak to Taylor, so we're going to kind of read through. Um, now, Taylor, you do have the ability to read the Q and A, but we'll, we'll kind of filter through for you. I don't see that chat option. So, if you want to just read the questions to me, that's fine. That's fine. I don't see, I'm afraid to push any of these. <laughs> Just this is a new format for some of us, everybody. So uh, I, we had some fun. We had a lot of fun actually setting this up a few days ago. So I, I'm not <laughs> touching the <a> phone. <laughs> All right. All right so <laughs> we have one question. Um, a student is asking, I'm a veteran and working professional who started this semester at Wake Tech but we'll finish in summer because of previous credits when I was younger. Should I apply? Should I apply now? If not, when? What kind of financial aid is available, which you did cover for working professionals and veterans? I have a high income because I work two jobs, but low disposable income. I'm just worried about the affordability. OK, so they're going to finish up. Hopefully you'll be finished up with your 30 transferable hours by the end of the summer and have the correct maths, Englishes and sciences. And we have a tool on our website and admissions.ncsu.edu. And then when you drag your cursor over to the word apply, it's right there at the top with like, you know, visiting and everything. There's a red bar. Hover over the word apply and let the drop down menu appear and bring it down to transfer and click right there. And you can see credit opportunities based on a historical database on all the colleges around the country, including some military credits that we can award right now. The state of North Carolina is still looking into more technical stuff that the universities can take for general ed type levels, but it's still in the middle of that project. So right now, anything from the JST, the Joint Services Military Transcripts, um, we can give a little bit of fitness and wellness management credits as well, but great that you're at Wake Tech and getting some of those transferable credits to meet for your uh, your main requirements and what have you. If you're finishing up in the summer, the best time to, for you, the best thing, because we can't wait for summer credits, unfortunately, to get you immediately into the fall, you should probably apply on this coming August 1st to apply for spring of 2022 if your major is offered. Um, and that would be the best thing to do. And then if you also, you know, it gives you a chance to take some stuff during the fall. We can't necessarily wait for the, those grades to come in. We might ask for your midterm, mid semester term, excuse me, mid semester term grades so we can get an idea of how you're doing on those courses. So if you're finishing up like one final requirement, but apply for the spring semester if your major is offered. As far as payment, you'd want to talk to financial aid. We also work heavily through our Veterans Affairs offices. Um, that would be uh, Daniel Hackley and Nick Drake in our Veteran Services Office, uh, which we have on campus. Um, and they work heavily to help you figure out how to work your GI Bill. We have a lot of um, military and veteran students on the campus and they're utilizing that GI Bill. And there's so many different, there's a few different versions of it as well from my understanding, working with Nick and Daniel as well. And that can help pay for that also. And so there's just a lot of different ways. And it's not too early even now for the student who asked this question. It's not too early now for you to get with Veteran Services and talk to Nick or, Dr or Daniel and talk about that process on how that's going to work. They can give you some really timely information. It's never, ever, ever too early to give them a call and find out how to get that worked out. Blair. All right. 
just to give you an idea, we've got about 15 more questions. No worries. Um, that's we're okay. We, we're, we're doing different people so that we have some extra time. Um, all right, right, next question. It says, I applied for spring 2021 back in September, but was denied. I decided to change my major for the application for fall 2021. I received a change of major form, which I completed. However, I cannot apply for fall 2021, and I'm not sure why. Does my application for spring 2021 work for fall 2021? How do I know my application was accepted and sent to NCSU? You would want to check your Wolfpaw account and see what the status is on there. If it still says fall, if it still says spring 2021, you were not admitted. The change of form, if you applied, use the change of major form before um, or the decision was made or as the decision was made and you got re-reviewed for spring 2021 and there was really no change in the decision. Here's the thing. With the applications, you can only use them once during a calendar year. So that's why you might be having trouble applying for the fall of 2021. You need to, like if you use the Common app, you need to go back in and use the Coalition app or the NC State application. You can't use the, comp, the Common app over again. You have to use a different application for that and apply for that different major. But check your Wolfpaw account and still see if it says spring 20. 20. That means probably your change of major was looked at. You may not have quite had the requirements, but what I would do is contact our office at 919-515-2434 and follow the prompts to get to an admissions officer and they can look up your account to see where it stands and see what happened right there. That's real easy for us to do, any of us in our office to do, and they can see if there is that. But I have a feeling that you need to reapply using one of the other applications and apply for fall 21 because that is a whole different semester. An application is only good for the one semester that you've applied for. That update form that may have gone through, it may not just have been changed over, but please just give our office a call and have one of the admissions officers take a look at the, your application account and they can guide you from there on what exactly needs to be done. You may not have to reapply. You might just have to make sure that that, that update form went through. Check your Wolfpaw account to see if there's any messages there and you know, just take a look through that and we can see what's going on. Blair. All right, thank you. Um, next question. How many undergraduate students are over the age of 25? What percent of educators are adjunct professors? I don't know the exact number, you know, now this is something I'm gonna have to check on. So I'm gonna humbly tell you that I do not know the amount of adjunct professors, to be honest, but I know that there is quite many i don't have an exact number so i'm gonna have to teach myself you know you're never too old to learn something new there's one for me to look up today um that information is probably could be on our website it may not be but again we can find out there's probably people in my office who might be watching this right now laughing at me and uh i've been around a little while anyway but there's there's a lot and they come from a wide variety of talent areas and what have you but most of your classes are taught by an adjunct professor there might be cases where a graduate student who's going to become a, the new future stellar adjunct professor might help with a class or two here and there and then um let's see what was the second part of the first part of that question Blair? Um, how many how how many students undergraduate students are um over the age of 25 a lot we have um we are not just a 18 to 22 year old university by any means of the word. We actually have students as young as 15, 16 years old at our university, and we have students as, who I believe this year we had a few people in their 60s, early 60s, starting to finish their college degree or starting to get a college degree. So it's a wide variety of people of all ages that are going to be in your classes. And that's really what I call the beautiful melting pot of wisdom. And so you're going to have a lot of people there from all different ages and all different backgrounds. And so there's a lot of students over the age of 25 um, that love over who are over 30, 40, 50, 60 as well also i mean it's a it's a very wonderful looking campus when you walk across campus and you see all different people with you know from different age ranges you know walking around with their book bags and their book packs and everything like that so it's not an 18 to 22 year old university by any means of the word not at all Blair. all right um let's see here I am applying to transfer for mechanical engineering and would like to know what classes NC State looks for in the other required courses. 
section of my associate degree. I plan to take those classes in the coming summer term. Can I still apply for fall, even though I have not completed my associate yet? I also want, I also, also what GPA requirements are there to transfer? That's stuff that we usually go over um, through those BDPs, but I'll let you handle that. The BDP and uh, ACA 122 classes that Wake Tech offers are great you know, resources for you. Those um, ACA professors, of which I know that there's over 100 ACA sections taught at Wake Tech as well. You can get a lot of information there. But to answer the question, technically, um, it, you don't necessarily, you do not have to finish the associate's degree in order to transfer to NC State University. It's just in order, when you finish an associate's degree, whether that be Associate of Arts, Associate of Science for Engineering, or Associate of Engineering for Engineering, that's where you can choose those classes. So I would take a look with your advisor at Wake Tech at the Associate of Engineering layout and choose your additional courses from there because everything transfers, whether it's Associate of Arts going to Humanities and Business or Associate of Science going into STEM, are engineering or even more focused on engineering the associate of engineering degree the ae that's where you would choose those additional courses on how to take those and the bdp layouts as well also can be very helpful those are maximization plans they're not absolute in stone courses that you have to follow because sometimes your schedules are different the class is not taught and you're like oh my god i can't get that course this semester we'll choose another one off of that pick list of the ae or something else from the bdp but that's how you pick your other ones but the main ones in order to be competitive for engineering for the fall, the students need to definitely be finishing up with that Calc 2 and that Calc Physics by this May. But the main requirements are the 30 minimum transferable hours. Again, no degree required, but in that 30 minimum hours, you have to have the English 111, the English 112, the Calculus 1, Math 271, the Calculus 2, Math 272, the Calculus-Based Physics, which is called General Physics 1. It's called Physics 251 at Wake Tech, and the General Chemistry 1, Chemistry 151, those are definites for all of our majors, computer science, engineering, mechanical engineering, all of them, and a great GPA competitive wise, that is a very competitive area. You want that GPA higher than 3.5, higher than 3.6 to be really competitive. Last year's average, it was pushing 3.8 for the students who got accepted. There was a lot of applicants applying for mechanical and a number of our different 17 individual engineering programs. So the higher above 3.5 you are, the better off you are. Um, again, hopefully if you're still working on finishing up some of those main requirements, math, physics, chemistry, English, hopefully you're finishing up the last piece of them. We can still strongly consider you. Summer courses, unfortunately, we cannot wait on those grades to get you in for the fall, but engineering does accept a few students for the spring terms. Blair. All right, so just so everyone knows, we did go ahead and close the question and answer box. Um, so hopefully all of you have gotten your questions in so far as we still have quite, quite a few to go. Um, next yeah. question. We'll get them. <laughs> Are ACT slash SAT scores still recommended if one has their 60 credit hour associate's degree? So basically if they've earned it. To... Nope. Don't bother, don't need them. Don't send in your high school transcript. Don't need any of it. If you've got more than 30 hours, here's the, even a better one. If you've got more than 30 hours already locked in with grades of transferable credit hours, don't send in your high school transcript. We're not asking for it. Don't send in your SAT, ACTs. We're not going to ask for them. So if you've got 30 hours of transferable grades locked in, final grades on transferable credit hours, we don't want any of that. Blair. Um, are the four online undergraduate programs listed all that is offered by NC State. So I believe they're asking about online programs. We have one undergraduate online program. It's called Leadership in the Public Sector. It is handled by our College of Humanities and Social Sciences. The acronym for that is C-H-A-S-S -S or CHAS. You go in there asking about CHAS, they're going to think you're already an NC State student. So when, that's a little kind of secret, little thing, bit of knowledge for you right there. So ask about the CHAS program, Leadership in the Public Sector. It is our one fully online program that we offer at NC State University. I don't know what the future holds now that the pandemic started and made every university go online in the country, around the world. Uh, you know, it kind of forced a lot of colleges that were not normally a online university, which there's a lot in and around us as well, but I'm not sure what our future holds now. That has to be decided by the powers that be of the university as to what might be in the future for online degrees. But currently, officially, it's that one online degree, leadership in the public sector, a humanities degree, or doing leadership in public um, service. 
and uh, it's a great degree. It is the one online. Not one class of it is taught in person. It is completely online, and that's done through the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, and you would just follow their guidelines for admissions. They do like to see the associate's degree finished in order to get into that program. That is a preference because they do have a reason they want you to dive into that major online for your junior and senior year. Blair. All right. Um, is there any credit offered for career experience? I have 10 years as a professional software engineer. I was curious if I could get any credit for that. I would love it if you could. We're looking into that. That could be in our future right now with the SACS accreditation, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. It's not quite allowed pretty much for us right now at really any of the public universities from the mountains to the coast, but there's some new stuff coming down the pipeline. Uh, especially for adult education. I'm actually serving on a board for adult education possibilities. And now this is a project that has just recently started and it's going to be probably a couple of years. And one of the questions that has come up is uh, career credit possibilities. They're not in place right now at the moment, but we are hopeful uh, that there may be a way to do it. Working with SACS so that it's all legit, it's regionally accredited. The regional accreditation is the highest accreditation in the country. It's actually higher than the national accreditations or independent accreditations. And that is one of the main talking uh, parts of this committee that is going to be working in the next year or two or three uh, for adult learners who already have a lot of career experience. But right now we're unable, unfortunately, to give credit for that at this time. Blair. All right, thank you. Um, I have a student who's asking, and I believe I may have met with them. As a CCP <laughs> student, which pathway would be preferred for a Bachelor of Science in Forest Management? That would probably be one of the science-based pathways. Blair, you might have the official name for that one. I'm not exactly sure because I know that there's three or four CCP pathways. And some students, it's not necessarily one that's designed to get you the associate's degree, but a lot of students do stay the extra time post high school and finish up the associate's degree. But I think it's one of the science-based pathways, I believe. I, I really believe I was working with this student. I think what we were trying to figure out from the NC State website was it's listed under, it's listed under your natural resources, but there's no BDP for it. So right. I was just kind of using like, wildlife and fisheries to guess maybe which classes were closely aligned. I think I have talked to this. I might have talked to this, have talked with this student as well. Also, um, associate science really is going to be the better one because it is a pure science based. I mean, that's heavy science right there. So any of the science based CCP pathways and you're taking courses from the Associate of Science degree will only be helpful. Just make sure you've got those highly recommended courses. I believe for fisheries and wildlife science, it's a matter of having the English 111 and 112, the having pre-calculus or higher. They do like to see calculus if you can get it. Um, biology or chemistry or both. I've seen a lot of students who have both biology 111 and 112. Maybe the chemistry, maybe not, or chemistry is your thing and you're taking chemistry 151 and the 152 or something along that line. But if you have a combination of biology and chemistry and those are on the Associate of Science degree pick list sheets without necessarily following a baccalaureate degree plan, a BDP that you keep hearing us talk about. As long as you're doing something along that line on a CCP science based um, pathway, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Blair. All right. Um, I plan to major in accounting at NC State in the fall, but as I was looking at the BDP for accounting, <laughs> right. I have not taken several of the accounting classes. Right. What would you recommend I do? I believe I worked with a student as well. It's OK. Uh, 30 transferable credit hours from the Associate of Arts degree. If you can follow some of the BDP, that's great. If you can't, working on the pick list from the Associate of Arts degree. Uh, definitely having the English one, at least English 111. Go ahead and get English 112 knocked out. And then the 263 calculus, it's called brief calculus, like briefcase, B-R-I-E-F. That's the one that they really like the most because it's a business based calculus. And the good thing about it is you don't have to take uh, math 172 pre-calculus trig 
to get to it. You can do pre-calc algebra 171 and skip 172 and go right to 263. Then if you can throw in some micro, macroeconomics, uh, business law, business statistics, the math 152, those are great courses to have in your transferable course list. Blair. All right, um, let's see. We kind of answered that one. OK, I think you might have touched on this. It says, is there any tips for the CHAS application? I currently graduated from high school and did dual enrollment, so I will be graduating with associates in summer. However, my current GPA is a 3.0 since I'm not the best with online classes, so I had trouble keeping up with assignments. Uh, you're preaching to me. I know that one. Oh, man. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, online is a shock to a lot of people. Others are really adapting to it. Others, it's a nightmare. I mean, we get that. The 3.0 is looking good. If you can maintain that, that's nice. Um, you know, and just apply for the one you just want a college level math that can be the quantitative literacy 143, the uh, the statistics 151, even the pre-calc 171, which would actually be a graduation requirement once you got to NC State University to graduate from the College of Humanities, Social Sciences, CHAS, and uh, just doing things along that line. But just maintain that 3.0, please, and just, you know, kind of keep that going and you should be in good shape and taking your courses off the Associate of Arts degree. And so you should be in pretty good shape and just fill out all of the application. A lot of students, you, it, it's interesting. Some of the applications we see where uh, students leave a lot of it blank. They just fill out the ones that have the asterisks on there. And yeah, that gives us some good information, but you can make yourself stand out and, you know, standing out amongst a sea of applicants, you know, that helps. It really does. So um, just following either the BDP for it. You don't want to follow that, follow the AA take courses off there, but make sure you've got a college level math, 143, 152, 171. That's uh, quantitative literacy, stats, or pre-calc algebra, respectively, in that order. And just, you know, maintain your GPA, basically. And you can apply, even though you said you're finishing your associates this summer, you've obviously already got 30 transferable credit hours already in. Um, as long as you've got those required courses, for Chaz, or you're finishing up maybe one of them during this fall, you can still apply for the fall term. We would just ultimately need maybe one or two extra transcripts at the end of the summer, or, you know, we need a transcript now. We might need one in June, and then we might need a final one when you finish that associate's degree so we can check mark that your gen ed has been met. So there you go. Blair. All right. I believe this is a question talking about in, in current times. Um, the student is asking, does the school have dorms or visiting tours face to face? Right now, um, as I speak today, we're not doing any visiting tours at this time. However, our visitor center services and crew, outstanding group of people, um, they are working with uh, a number of different departments around the campus, including housing uh, and services. They're trying to figure out and they've got a plan in place where they look like they are going to be off, be able to safely offer a unique version of an on-campus tour. Now, currently right now, the campus, every public campus is public. If you want to come, you can download a self-guided tour off our website or the visitor center website as well, and you can come onto campus. We're just asking our chancellor and the powers that, you know, the chancellor and his team are asking that everybody mandating everybody wear a mask, whether you're outdoors or indoors, no matter where you are on the campus. Come on to the campus if you want. Just practice social distancing, you know, have your hand sanitizer. Please wear your mask at all times, even outdoors. A lot of our public buildings, such as our student union, our bookstore, uh, our, um, and some other venues on campus, they are open, but we just want you to practice all those details. So you can come on to campus and everything. We're not going to, you know, there's just practicing the social protocols. We have self-guided tours online. We have virtual tours online led by a live person to take you through the virtual tour. And that thing is fantastic. And then um, also, you know, other ways of virtually visiting the campus. On campus, you can do it yourself with a self-guided tour. It's awesome, but there is a plan in place and they're working on it even today, right now, as I'm speaking to you. Uh, possible stuff firing up later on in February, March. So my word to you is stay tuned uh, because there might be a way for you to, it'll be a combination of a self-guided tour with at specific times during the day 
with student ambassadors parked at various parts of interest to go over little areas about the university. So it's going to be sort of a hybrid of a tour based on what we know so far. It could change. It might get altered a little bit, but there is a goal. They're just coming up with the safe way to do it because we do know, and it will be more in limited numbers. We used to do these huge group tours. That's not going to happen. It's going to be families kind of on their own, but you'll get to have students parked in certain areas that know the university better than all of us to get com combined. And so just stay tuned for that and keep an eye on that because there is they are working on those plans right now. All right, next question. Um, student is asking, they came in late. They saw something about averaging GPAs from different colleges. Can you explain that again? And yeah. I've heard the part about dropping the lowest grades. And yeah. then we only have two more questions. No worries. Uh, what we do is, as a public institution in the state of North Carolina, and Wake Tech may have even done this to you too, if you're coming from multiple schools, all of us, the, the two-year community colleges, the four-year public universities, we all have to have transcripts. When you enter the university, the community college systems, you have to supply transcripts from every college you've been to, whether they take the credits or not. And when what we're going to do is we're going to average the GPAs of all the transferable types of courses attempted no matter what the GPA, what the grades are on those types of courses. Technical courses do not get average. So whether they're an A or an F, they don't help you or hurt you respectively. But on the transferable types of courses like Gen Ed, English, Math, Science, English, History, I already said English, History, Humanities, Social Sciences, Foreign Languages, and Phys Ed, things along that line, or even business, some business courses or some computer science transferable types of courses. Those things are what Wake Tech, what NC State are going to average together to see what your overall cumulative GPA is. But again, they have to be on the transferable types of courses list in order to be calculated. If they're not on that list, that means they're too technical in nature. They don't count as part of your GPA. Blair. All right. Oh, and then we do drop the two lowest grades below a C minus, whether you repeated them or not. And if you repeat it more than two, uh, more than two courses, three, four, five, six, seven courses you repeated at that same institution where you were repeating that same course, then we will average them together. But the first two grades, we drop them if they're below a C minus. If you repeat them, great. If you didn't, they just don't count. OK, Blair. All right. Um, if I want to minor in a subject, do I have to decide before applying or afterwards? Afterwards, you'd sit down with your academic advisor when you're sitting down and uh, you don't put minors on the application. Do not need to do that, so no worries there. You can think about it because you may change your mind after you get to NC State or after you may change your mind after you sit down with your academic advisor as well, but you can declare minors after you get to NC State University. And we have minors in practically almost every single one of our subjects, almost every single one of them. All right, um, two more questions. Who has seniority as far as parking passes? Is there a specific <laughs> parking area for students who don't live on campus? They do have parking areas for students who live off campus. Uh, there's not, I think if it was on campus, if you lived on campus, you would have seniority the more hours you have. If you live off campus, then there are de designated parking areas all around the campus for students who are what they call commuter, commuter students that um, can park on campus. Also, you got to remember something. Our Wolfline shuttle buses, they run out to a lot of the com um, apartment communities around the radius of the campus, and a lot of the apartment communities have their own shuttle buses that are running on and off campus all throughout the entire day. So a lot of times, your car just stays parked the entire academic week because you're catching your own apartment community, especially those apartment communities on Hillsborough Street and Western Boulevard and uh, Hills uh, Hillsboro. Western Boulevard, yeah, those are the main ones. I've never seen so many sh apartment buses on the campus as I have in the last five years, and it just seems like it's growing and growing and growing. You see as many of those coming on and off campus all day long as you do our Wolfline shuttle buses. So you might want to look at those apartment communities there as well, and just leave your car parked. Keep the miles off of it and preserve it for your career. Blair. All right, thank you. Um, last question. I am a few semesters from getting my associate in arts at Wake Tech. When should I start applying? My last semester at Wake Tech or earlier? Last semester at Wake Tech, at the start of the last semester at Wake Tech. So if you are graduating, let's now let's make sure we're clear. I'm clear on this. If you're graduating in December, <clears throat> excuse me, 
you want to apply in August and go ahead and get that transcript to us and then we'll need some final transcripts in December when you graduate. If you are applying, if you are graduating in the fall, the best time to apply is during December holiday break through February 15th and get the transcripts to us and then we'll ultimately need a final transcript to make sure you maintain your academic grades and integrity that we admitted you on. Same thing for the spring entries. That's what that December final transcripts for as well also. But again, if you are finishing in December, apply between August 1st and October 1st. If you are finishing in right and if you're finishing in the spring, <coughs> excuse me, between the December holiday break and February 15th, that is the time to apply for that next fall. Blair. You're muted, Blair. <laughs> Sorry, just I do one it all more. The time. I do it all the time. <laughs> Good thing we practice. Um, no. What I missed was, is psychology a competitive major? It is, it is. It's a great major because we go all the way up to the doctorate in psychology. We're uh, one of a handful of universities that actually has the undergraduate, the master's, and the doctorate degree as well also. So it does have a competitive edge, but again, if you're above that 3.0 range and you've got the college mass and the Englishes, you've got a great chance of getting into it. It's just that, you know, I think academically, the courses off the Associate of Arts degree that are related in that area or, you know, are primary to the degree track. And you can look at all of our degree tracks on our website as well. You can see them in a number of different ways through BDPs, through the actual four year layouts that are on NC State's own website. If you had started there, you know, as a, you know, a 15 to 18 year old freshman, what have you, a few geniuses on campus as well. And so, 15 year old. I'd love to, God, that must be an awesome feeling. But anyway, um, so, but um, you've got a number of different ways to follow it. So basically, that's how it works. But psychology, it's a very popular program just because we're very strong in that program and we offer all the degrees and you can go into specialized subject areas with your master's and doctoral degree as well also. But the main undergraduate psychology degree is broad. It's by itself. There's no concentration there. You get the main gist, that foundation, basically using my hands. Here's the ground. Here's that foundation that you're going to lay. And then masters specialized if you want. Doctoral specialized and you can move on. So yes, very popular. Just keep up the great grades, have the requirements. And then when you get here, knock it out. Go for internships, co-ops, research, definitely research opportunities. Tell them that advisor from the moment you sit down, I want to do research and make that college resume look really sweet. There you go. All right, that wraps up our questions from the Q&A. Um, Taylor, if you want to share any kind of contact information, now would yeah. be the time, but this is it. And we really do want to thank everybody for joining us today. We did have quite a big turnout. Um, we, we have recorded this. We will be uploading it to YouTube next week. Um, so for those of you who did ask about that, um, it will be available next week, so just check our YouTube channel. Um, and if you would please be sure to fill out the survey that we just posted in the Q&A box. Um, we do love to get feedback from students, so we do appreciate that. And Taylor, I'll let you close out. All right, awesome. And I guess when I'm done, I just hit the leave button. <laughs> Is that what I'm yes, <laughs> you literally just leave. All right, so I just want to make sure. Uh, yep. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for coming again. Humbled that y'all came to join us and everything because, you know, we just love the interest. We love students coming to us. We love changing lives for the better and making you competitive in the world because our students and our graduates, they do end up not just in Raleigh, even though I said that in the beginning, a lot of students love Raleigh so much they stay in Raleigh, but we've got graduates uh, at other, who've moved on to other big universities because they wanted to separate their degrees into different area, different universities and what have you, or some of them stay for all of their degrees at NC State. But we do have alum that are in every state of the country and they're all over the world as well. So NC State can guide you to a lot of great things around the world as well. If you do, and you know, so that's why we're humbled because we want to give you those opportunities as much as possible. And, uh, you know, just on a lighter note, you know, you can go to the country's number one university rank for what you want to do. And if you don't feel like that's your home away from home because the college fit your own personal ranking, you know, we've got a lot of great rankings. So do a number of our great colleagues at other universities around the nation. We talked to a lot of our friends who work in admissions as well, but it is go visit those campuses. Even during these 
trying times for us as well. Go on a Saturday, go on a Sunday when it's quiet and just get a feel for it because, you know, because every day of college, even when you're there at a college, it's not going to be hustling and bustling all the time. But that fit, that feel, that home away from home, I see myself here. That's the most important thing in your soul. That's really the most important part. And, you know, because you can go to the number one ranked university for what you want to do. If you don't feel like it's your home away from home or you fit there, it's not the number one ranked university for you personally. And that can make things kind of go downhill for you. We've got, we're a very competitive university, but and we've got 35,000 brilliant minds, you know, that had choices and they chose us because we produce strong graduates for what they want to do, strong opportunities for what they want to do. They go all over the world and become just an extremely poor, important part of the whole world's society as well also. They had choices, but they chose us because the strong graduation rates, the strong graduation options, the strong options that they're here while they're here at NC State University, and the fact that we are their home away from home, and that's what we want to do for you all as well. So that's why we're humbled you came to see us. And we hope to do that for you as well. For more information, please get in touch with us at our Office of Undergraduate Admissions at 919. I'm going to give you three things, so get the pen ready. First, the Undergraduate Admissions Office number is 919. All of our numbers are 919, area code 515-2434. That's Undergraduate Admissions. And ask to speak to an admissions officer or a transfer admissions officer. We'll be glad to answer any questions that you've got. And then the websites, again, I'll repeat those. The main university website for you to see everything that we have, ncsu.edu, okay? ncsu.edu, more admission specific information, admissions.ncsu.edu as well also. And then if you need to get in touch with me, you can just ask for me by calling the number and ask for Taylor, the transfer guy. That's what they call me. Thanks to my community college colleagues over here that named me that many years ago. They're like, you're like Taylor, the transfer guy, but or just ask for Taylor. And um, but my email address is T-A-H-O-L-L-A-N at NCSU.edu. But again, we do. We believe in cross training in our office. So all of our college admissions officers were all cross trained in freshman um, admissions, international admissions, transfer admissions, every kind of admissions. I do work um, more. I do work a lot with the veterans services. I'm on the Veterans Affairs Committee for those of you who have um, military questions as well. But we also have a great military support staff in our office as well, in case you may not be able to reach me at a certain time as well. So there's always people available for everybody in our office. So definitely get in touch if you've got more questions. And hopefully everybody did take a picture of that slide with all those emails and um, website addresses for all the individual colleges because those deeper questions, you want to get in touch with the college of your major and get in touch with those um, fine people at each of those departments, colleges of NC State University. And with that, I'm going to say thank you again so much. Really means a lot. Really does. And everybody, please, please stay safe and well. And y'all take care. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Taylor. All right. Bye, Blair. Bye, everybody. Take care. Stay bye. safe.